Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss Panic Room, starring Jodie Foster, Forrest Whitaker, Dwight Yoakam, Jared Leto, and Kristen Stewart, directed by David Fincher. Now I do remember, this is the first David Fincher film I went to go see in theaters at the time, back in 2002, with my parents. And did I like it? Well, let's get into it and we'll see. I do like the opening credits on the buildings, as it was a cool opening sequence, put some words in between buildings in Manhattan, which I've been there before a long time ago. Meg Altman, played by Jodie Foster, is a divorced woman and a single mother to her daughter Sarah, played by Kristen Stewart, who does fine work here, but was... But she's better than... I would say she's fine at best, but she's even... This was before she was ever in fucking Twilight. Which is serious, which is a series hopefully I don't do because I don't really want to do that one. As they get a house just right away, and I'm like, why would, why the fuck would you get a house right away without paperwork? Like, wouldn't that take some time as it felt rather too quick for of them to buy the damn house? And this is the first movie of a one place location I've seen, like, phone booth and 127 hours. Which is more of a survival story, as this and Phone Booth have one thing in common, which is a story in one place, as someone is terrorizing you, and Phone Booth got it right so f as far as the length is concerned. But here, this is 20 minutes too long. I mean, it's almost two hours, but I would have preferred a running length of 90 minutes. As we know a little about who the characters are, for example, her ex-husband left her her for a woman who I'll talk briefly about a little later as he's rich and honestly Jodie Foster is miscast in this despite she after seeing seven she wanted to work with David Fincher in a movie but this is the but is this the one to work with him in not really as so many complications were going on behind the scenes like it was not supposed to be Jodie Foster believe it or not it was supposed to be Nicole Kidman who I'll talk about later in the show which would have been so much a better choice, as she's more attractive. Sorry, Jodie Foster. But she was filming a movie... Well, she injured herself while filming Moulin Rouge during that show, that filming. And also the whole 9-11 tragedy, but David Fincher wanted this thing done, and it, as it was taking way too long... I like how the camera moves from one place to the next, as Meg and Sarah are asleep... Some robbers named Burnham, played by Forrest Whitaker, who's a tremendous actor. Raoul, played by Dwight Yoakam, and Junior, played by Jared Leto, break into the house while Meg and Sarah are asleep. And how did you not hear the fucking alarm? I mean, come on. We do get that cool shot of Burnham staring at Meg while she's, while she's asleep as the camera is going sideways. I thought that was a good image from this movie. They whisper rather loudly, and if it were me, I would hear them and get Sarah and get in the panic room. And these characters are fine at best, but the choices being made in this movie are very problematic. Like, really? Is this the best movie you can get? Is this the best this movie can give me? I was honestly expecting better choices being made in this movie, but not quite the case. Meg finally sees the, these there's robbers in the house, which, what the f fuck took her so goddamn long i mean seriously meg wakes sarah up and gets her in the panic room which was sarah's idea to begin with as they get in rather safely while junior is rather pissed off and this is when the boring kicks in meg puts the speaker on as she's trying to communicate with the robbers to tell them to leave the house as they want something in the room they're in and tells them they will let them go if they just go in there and this plot is absolutely tedious particularly in, as the vent gets cold and Sarah takes as take as little as possible when while the robbers try to find a way to get in the panic room and get what they need as they lock they lock them in which to me is so fucking stupid for especially for two hours because they're not leaving until they get the fuck out of the house. As the, How are they supposed to? Meanwhile, 
Meg and Sarah try to call the neighbors and tells them to call the cops. And Junior Raul try to break in from the bottom while Burnham gets an idea to break the door as they breathe some gas as Sarah gets some fresh air outside while Meg gets the gas back to the thieves and she puts a fire on them. And Junior's pissed off as we briefly as he was briefly burned in the arm, which is looked rather fucking dangerous. As it was stupid, Sarah gets an idea to get a neighbor across the street to wake up with a flashing light. Sarah says she learned from the movie Titanic, which makes sense in some ways. As the sleepy neighbor eventually wakes up and closes the blinds while she and Meg call for help from the neighbor and goes back to sleep, which is a good idea, but executed rather poorly. And that is a terrible neighbor, as New York City is never that never is a city that never sleeps, which is very problematic. Meg opens the panic room door and grabs her cell phone. As three robbers hear it, and they go upstairs after they hear a lamp break, and flash and a flash comes up, and she gets back in time for the doors to close which is risky, but at the same time is a bad idea to begin with. As they learn, she has a cell phone which has no signal whatsoever, and honestly, I like Meg and Burnham as characters, even though Jodie Foster, yeah, you're miscast, sorry. But Sarah, Raul, and Junior... Sarah's fine, but Raul and Junior are bad characters to connect with. Kind of with Sarah, but she's fine at best. Meg pulls a card on the f a cord of the phone in the panic room while Burnham tries to pull it the phone wire as Meg gets it away from them and they call the police first but they put her on hold and Sarah calls the ex-husband and gets, gets picked up by Nicole Kidman whom the ex-husband left Meg for picks up the phone and tells the husband they're in trouble and he does call the police as they'll eventually get there but which took him, like, the longest time, honestly. But the ex-husband arrives first while Sarah is dizzy and hungry while they have a, to remain in the panic room, and there's no food and water in the room, and Junior gives up the pain, the plan, excuse me, I almost said pain, and leaves as Raul shoots Junior dead, which was a graphic but rather dumb scene. The ex-husband comes in by the house as Raul points the gun at the ex-husband and Burnham and and Raul find out his name which happens to be Stephen Altman and they use him as a hostage for bait and Sarah is getting worse as far as the dizziness goes and the thieves torture Stephen and Sarah is getting some kind of asthma attack while Stephen is brutally beat up and Burnham tells Raul to stop beating him up as Meg gets out again and finds a needle and gets water for Sarah with a needle that'll cure Sarah and Burnham and Raul gets in the panic room while Sarah is suffocating and Burnham looks the locks the panic room door while Raul's hand is caught on the door while Meg is, tries to shoot the brick and break the door down and it bothers me how many bad choices are being made in this movie. Burnham gives Sarah the ejection from a coma in the stomach, which what has got to be the very painful, as she's cured, and Burnham tells Meg she's going to be fine as Meg goes to Stephen, as he's hurt pretty damn badly when he tries to lift his arm until the cops arrive. And believe me, what took them so long? And she opens the door, and the cops beg to go inside the house, but she tells them no because they would kill Sarah. And if it were me, I would let the cops inside and get the motherfuckers robbing my house out. And the scene went on a little too long, in my opinion. Burnham and Raul poke a hole in the safe and try to break into it while Meg breaks the cameras. And the robbers sees the cameras be breaking while Sarah is ready to fight back with the robbers as they break it open and as they find 22 million dollars while Stephen holds the gun which has which was so goddamn stupid they got up uh, they get out of the panic room as Meg locks the door to get out as they see Stephen holding the gun and as he tells Raul to let Sarah go 
as Burnham gets out while Raul is knocked out and gets back up and fights Steven. And they all fight Raul, and as Steven is almost killed until Burnham shoots Raul dead and saves the Altman's lives and gets arrested by the cops, and Meg and Sarah move out of the house right away, and the climax was executed rather poorly as I'm not satisfied. Now it's time for the rating. I'll give this movie a 4.3 out of 10. The choices that are made in this movie are just bad. I mean, oh my, I mean, my God. They're very, they're really poorly done by the actors. I do like Jodie Foster, even though she's miscast, and Forrest Whitaker in their roles, but the other actors were not good characters whatsoever. Sarah was fine, I would say, but this movie was 20 minutes too long, as that amount should have been cut, as this is almost a two-hour movie, but it would have been preferable to make it at least 90 minutes, but unfortunately, David Fincher tries to go two hours, maybe a little over, as it is, a, it needs a little bit of editing. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me, and next time we'll be back with Zodiac. And until next time, let's get out of the panic room.